What's going on, guys? Episode 27, Savage Talks. We have on today Philip Hodas. He is a 3D digital artist based in Prague. He is absolutely incredible. I'm sure most of you guys, many of you guys at least, know who he is. His work's going to be down in the show notes. Check it out. But ton of success so far for him on Nifty Gateway, some of the other selling platforms, and really looking forward to everything else that he has coming out. We go through his works, his favorites, uh, basically how he's transitioned as far as success. Doesn't sound like much, to be honest, actually. And, you know, he's just super down to earth, super likable guy. I had a blast. Uh, it was awesome speaking to him. It was a great opportunity. I really appreciate his time. Let me know what you guys think. As always, appreciate your time as well, spending it with me. So thank you. Stay, stay safe. You know, you want to introduce yourself a little bit and then kind of talk about your beginnings. I know that, you know, you started off with drawing as, at a young age, but <laughs> where did you become more of like a professional artist? Okay, so uh, should I, should I like take it from the top, like my name, where I'm located and all that stuff or? Uh... Yeah, sure. Hit it. All right. All right. So, uh, hi, I'm uh, Philip Hodas. Uh, I'm 3D artist from Prague, uh, Czech Republic. Uh, um, I focus on like uh, very realistic yet slightly unrealistic uh, style or like sort of themes in my work. Uh, I like a couple months ago, I uh, started dipping into NFTs uh, and I've been really enjoying it so far. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I guess that's uh, all from like the introduction part. Uh, in terms of the, like you mentioned, where I became more like a professional artist, I think uh, it kind of depends because I used to do like a lot of uh, 2D work, uh, like graphic design, typography, uh, some posters and like covers for releases for like my friends who do music. Uh, but I'm not sure if that would be really considered like uh, artistry in like uh, per se. So uh, in terms of like the 3D part of the journey, I think that would be like 2015 is when I really started getting back into 3D. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it sort of like took off for me around mid 2016, mm -hmm. maybe like uh, yeah, early to mid, like second quarter or somewhere around that. Um, yeah, and then I kind of like left my day job as a graphic designer in a studio mm -hmm. and uh, went full-time freelance uh, doing 3D work for clients and uh, yeah, personal work for uh, Instagram, which kind of was uh, like probably the major like thing for me, uh, which really helped me to build my uh, career and sort of like kind of uh, push me forward. Mm -hmm. So did you, did you do more functional training? Did you kind of learn more on your own or like how did you really get started in like the 3D digital space yeah so um i'm kind of <laughs> because i'm i get very excited about stuff mm -hmm. and uh so for me i'm you know kind of like trial and error guy that i just like try and try and try and fail and then one time it works like yay uh so uh, most of the stuff i learned was you know at, at the beginning i had to like watch some tutorials mm -hmm. uh, mostly on like youtube or mm -hmm. vimeo and places like this uh but that was generally just in the beginning because i kind of wanted to venture into the unknown and kind of like experiment uh, on my own a little bit uh so yeah most of the stuff i know like i learned is i'm i'm the thing is like i'm not even sure that half of the stuff the way i do it is the correct way to do it mm. because i just kind of like uh, create these like weird workflows that kind of work for me but probably wouldn't work for anyone else mm. but if we can call that learning yeah. <laughs> then uh, it's mostly just like kind of self self-taught and mm. you know experimenting and stuff like that yeah i mean you know to to that point right like do you does there have to be like a, a right way like there might be an efficient way but there's, I feel like in, in like that kind of artistic space, the end result matters the most, but then on top oh, of that, like okay. how you get there, like a one pattern might have a different end result than another pattern. You know, like I, I don't know enough about digital art to really like speak to specifics, but I feel like if you start doing like the colors and then the shading, like, you know, versus, you know, something else to that extent, like, you know, it's, it's going to create a different product. So your processes is also a part of your artwork, right? Um, yeah, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm, because the thing is, like, uh, since I was working in advertising, uh, which is more kind of like 
I'm, I'm not going to say like less artistic, but there are more like rigid sort of like pipelines and workflows, how to do stuff, mm -hmm. uh, like the mo to like make it the most efficient and uh, like both cost time, uh, you know, even like uh, in, in regards to like, you know, sometimes you have to ship the files to like other group or mm -hmm. other artists. So, you know, so they know how it, how, it, how to work with the file or like it is easier for them. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like still viewing it from this perspective that like in that regard, it probably isn't the, isn't ideal. Mm -hmm. But in context of like my personal work, uh, I think, you know, I always kind of like try to optimize the way I do stuff. Mm -hmm. So it works in specific case. Sometimes it's kind of like, you know, there is like new unexpected hurdle that I never experienced before. So I kind of like go ha spend half day Googling around trying to like figure out if someone has had to tackle it before. Mm -hmm. And then kind of, like, you know, sometimes I find, oh, he did it in like different software and I cannot find anything for the software I'm using. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, shit, I get it, you know, like look at it, like kind of like, do it on my own, but try to like apply his technique to like what I'm trying to do in my tools. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so in, in like in personal work, it's, I think you are correct that it's, uh, you know, whatever works just works, mm -hmm. but in like, in like the advertising context, it can be a bit tricky, you, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, there has to be some sort of like, like not rules, but like, you know, a uh, method to the madness. Mm -hmm. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I, I used to work in digital advertising and the, yeah, there, there was just a ton of rules that certain brands wanted you to follow and stuff to that extent. And I think that, you know, to the more artistic side of things, like I worked in just digital analytics, but to your side of things, you have to really kind of like abide by like the customer, the client's, you know, viewpoint or whatever different rules that the brand has. Right. Yeah. So for, for you, like right now, I've seen that you have like a ton of works that were up on your Instagram for like the Special Olympics and uh, like just stuff to that extent. Are you still doing different client base works or are you just kind of tapped out as far as that goes? Oh, well, because I, I was, you know, for pa because I, I for past like two to three years, I've been really trying to kind of get uh, like... Because I always had like enough client work to like sustain me and everything, you know, mm. it's not like I would like struggle, mm. but, uh, you know, I try to kind of like grow the business, get like bigger, better clients and stuff like that. Mm. So I try to really kind of build a client base, push for that kind of stuff. Mm. And I even like stopped really producing that much uh, of, like of my personal works for, uh, I think 2018, 2019 were pretty like just a couple of posts. Mm. Um, but then in 2020, when it started looking like much better, yeah. uh, the coronavirus hit and like all the projects that I had lined up for like several, several months ahead uh, were kind of like either canceled or like postponed uh, indefinitely. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but most of them just got canceled. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I invested way more time into personal work last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it, it's kind of like, you know, it rebounded a bit. So I did get, you know, some more jobs and stuff like that. Mm. But uh, it never really, you know, the style I or like the stuff I like to do uh, in my personal work is not very like advertising friendly. Mm -hmm. So I never, I guess, never really had this sort of uh, like particular connection to it. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it sort of like went uh, south last year, I kind of focused more on my personal work. And then the then the, I noticed NFTs, which kind of you know, was a perfect match for my plan to try to make it in like more sort of art world rather mm -hmm. than advertising world. Uh, so yeah, so I, I'm pretty much focused on uh, personal work right now. Mm -hmm. I had some jobs in uh, January and I still have some uh, things that I already like uh, promised, you know, that I would, I would do. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm basically turning down everything <laughs> right now and just focusing on, uh, doing stuff like my personal work, not necessarily like just for NFTs, but you know, in general, like experimenting because I have like a long list of ideas like on the screen right here. Awesome. And uh, I never had a chance to really get to it. Mm -hmm. So it's so, you know, because I had to like pick one uh, like series idea or one like idea for an image mm -hmm. and just like do that because I didn't have the time to like do all of it. Mm -hmm. But now it's kind of the tables have turned a little bit. So now I'm kind of like, Oh yeah, I might, you know, yeah, I might try some stuff, experiment a little. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I think that's where you're going to get even more success, right? Like in that experiment, experimentation phase um, for, so given, given like your more recent success, you, I mean, I don't know how many people know this, but you know, you won Esquire man of the year for the digital category. Right. And that's obviously a, a clout boosting win, right? Like Esquire is not, 
a oh unknown yeah but publication. It, like just to, like be clear it's not like because each uh, i think they do like for each country mm -hmm. or like each uh, area where they have like specific esquire mm -hmm. like mutation like language mutation mm -hmm. so this was like czech esquire man of the year so it's not like world <laughs> that would be way cooler but <laughs> it's uh, like uh it's for it's like the czech version so i'm i'm not sure how it ties to the world but i guess it's mm -hmm. like the kind of detached that it's like uh you know american one british one mm. and stuff like that so yeah uh yeah i mean it, it was definitely nice uh I, I wasn't expecting to ever like you know do anything like that mm. with uh 3d because that's kind of like you know more of a it always was more of a like nerdy kind of you know uh locked up in an office for 12 hours a day mm. barely seeing any sunlight <laughs> so this is yeah it's it's very nice i was a very very I was very surprised, but very pleased at the same at the same time. Sorry, for for you working though, do you I, from talking to a lot of artists, right? Like they do seem to do that, you know, quote unquote nerdy thing of locking themselves in a room for twelve hours and working. So, oh, oh know. I do that as well. I mean, <laughs> totally, yeah. I mean, this is my basement office, so mm -hmm. it's like this is my dungeon. <laughs> uh. <laughs> um. So so as you've as you've gotten more like clout and success, and then you know the. I'm sure there's other news articles on top of that of of the Esquire success. Have companies kind of like rushed and been like clamoring to have you do their work because now they get to say Philip Hodas is doing it and like no no there's no there's no. no. <laughs> it's it's like it's kind of funny because uh, I I'm not sure if like what 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 is it but I never really you know I had bunch of like pretty. I, I wouldn't say like, you know, huge successes in terms of like press or uh, media, mm. but uh, I like, I, I think like the last two, two series I did, well, no, like I did like a s series with like skulls of cartoons. Mm. Uh, and then I did like the pop culture dystopia series. Mm. And these two have been pretty popular, uh, like in on online, even offline, like printed media. Mm -hmm. And I gave so many interviews, like, so many at, at one point i was like oh no please no more interviews because <laughs> you know, i want to give it but at the same time it's like sometimes you know i'm i get very long-winded mm -hmm. and i just spend like three hours just typing out the answers uh -huh. and then i found out that they just cut uh -oh. two-thirds of it and it was just like a little footnote somewhere in the newspaper I'm like god damn it yeah but uh i never really had any company reach out to me like oh yo we saw an article about you that's sick mm -hmm. want to work with you nothing like that at all that's it's almost surprising, right? Like, I guess, I guess there is really like a, a strong dichotomy between your internet presence and then the effect that it has on your life. I would, mm. I would guess. Yeah, totally. I, I totally like the, like, well, I, I don't know. It's because I noticed that a lot of people, a lot of like, uh, friends or something like they, they think that like, oh my, oh my, that's like a lot of followers. But the thing is like, it has absolutely no impact on my life whatsoever. Really? Like I never had anyone like say, "Oh, you that guy?" No, never, ever, not even once. We gotta like, get you more uh, distinguishing features, like a, like a big burly beard, or you know something <laughs> like that. <laughs> no, like, like I've never really like uh, to be honest, I never really shared too much about my like personal life online. Mm -hmm. I always focused more on the work because I was like, "Yeah, who gives a crap about me?" You know, like mm -hmm. my day to day life or anything like that. So. Uh, I sort of like kept that out. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it okay if I swear here? Oh you yeah, yeah, you're cool. You're cool. This yeah, is yeah, 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 yeah. I just like realized like, oh, maybe I should. <laughs> no, no, no. You good? You good? Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, I just started like getting more like opening up more uh on Twitter. I don't know, maybe like six, seven months ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you know Instagram doesn't feel like a good place to really share this stuff because it seems like very personal for me to like share some pictures from like i don't know uh walk with my girlfriend or something mm -hmm. but on twitter it's much uh more sort of easier to kind of like just you know tweet something out you know it doesn't have to necessarily be connected to work yeah so uh, yeah so maybe that maybe that's that i don't know maybe it's gonna change everything and i'm gonna like, oh yeah that's that guy and i will get recognized and stuff i don't <laughs> not that i would want that you know <laughs> but it's just uh not very yeah the online thing doesn't really yeah it doesn't impact my personal life at all yeah yeah i think for for me so i recently started using twitter a lot more too and twitter seems like the absolute best way to engage with everybody where it's it's almost i mean obviously clubhouse is doing it and blowing up very correctly <laughs> because it just does it the connection so well but you can engage 
in such a more direct manner where it's not just like here's my picture here's my blurb like you you can really you know engage with hashtags or just different interests and everything to that extent and it's very like siloed but you're finding other people that are in the exact same silo mm -hmm. yeah yeah totally so for so it, it sounds like you don't have a team like this is still like a one-man show I, I was gonna ask if you had like you know a team and you know a manager and stuff <laughs> to that extent yeah I, i'm not really but i really should get someone to mm -hmm. help me I, I you know i kind of <laughs> uh gave some like uh load offloaded some work onto my girlfriend but mm. she moved to norway for a couple <laughs> months so now i'm kind of lost like oh no paperwork oh mm. but uh yeah I, I generally do everything myself uh mm. but it's I, I think it's just this uh thing that i'm, I'm just worried that if i kind of um delegate the work to someone and it's not gonna get done in a way i you know i want it to get done mm. uh you know, I would have to like redo it myself. Plus, I would have to pay the person anyway. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, kind of, uh, yeah, I, I should probably uh, give up a little bit of the control and kind of like let stuff flow. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's still very new to me to try to do something like that. I you know I had a couple of bad experiences with like working with someone on something, mm -hmm. and then you know like oh, client didn't like it, and the guy's like oh no, I don't want to do that. Or uh, yeah, I'm. I'm yeah, you just do it yourself. Mm -hmm. So in the end, it was kind of like just a waste of uh, time and energy. And then, you know, I had to do the work anyway. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, m moving forward, I'm definitely thinking I should kind of try it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, like, I, I think that as you have more success and then like time constraints, like you just, you can't find anything. It's it's something that uh, I listened to a recent podcast with uh, Calacanis and uh, Lex Fredman, who is like a, MIT guy and they just talk about you know finding people that are smarter than you and like you know more talented but I mean in your case it might be hard to find more talent but you know maybe <laughs> in, in, in other groupings <laughs> um, uh, it, it's the, the thing is like uh, uh, I think there is like uh, actually a lot of people who like know way way more about 3D than me mm -hmm. or like about like pretty much all the stuff I do myself these days mm -hmm. but uh, you know since when I was like doing the freelance thing, there wasn't really like that much extra, like, uh, uh, like that huge of a volume of, uh, like jobs and stuff to really be able to like afford full-time employees. Mm -hmm. I mean, technically I could, I could do it, but, uh, yeah, it just didn't feel like it would make sense like financially. Mm -hmm. So maybe like, you know, now it things might be <laughs> way different with like NFTs in the, in the, picture and all that stuff uh but yeah I, I think this is like very good to kind of like s surround yourself with like people that are like above you in mm -hmm. like you know aspects you want to get better at and kind of like move forward yeah yeah your your artwork is so recently as, as getting into digital art i've showed pieces to people and a lot of artwork is subjective right but your artwork is the first pieces that I've shown to people. And obviously your success on Instagram shows this, but that like general, you know, more normies can see and go, oh, that's, that's dope. You know, like, like I showed <laughs> it to my mom who's 60 and she goes, oh, that's, that's really cool. You know, where like I've showed her some other pieces and, you know, not no bash on like anybody else, but you know, some of them are weird or like too conceptual. And she goes, I, I don't understand that. You know, like my mom is just, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I can admire the beauty, but your artwork is that uh, intergenerational, like easy to look at and go, oh, that's that's fucking sick. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's very nice to hear. I mean, I actually uh, was kind of, you know, when uh, because what I noticed that what I kind of like about when I, you know, see some sculpture or uh, some like piece, mm -hmm. I kind of like to, you know, what I personally enjoy is like seeing some something that i know or like that i have like some sort of uh idea how it should look what it should be mm -hmm. uh, and then i see some like either like funny or weird uh, reinterpretation of it mm -hmm. or like when it's put in like some like weird juxtaposition of like context or something like that mm -hmm. uh so i kind of try to do the same like that i uh it doesn't necessarily have to be like related to pop culture uh but uh a lot of stuff that like people know from their life or something 
but then it's like whoa it's like way different like it's like just completely di- used in like a different way or mm-hmm. it's stylized differently than would you like than you would normally expect mm-hmm. so i always kind of like that when i saw it like uh you know, I, I, there is like this one sculptor in Czech Republic and he did like this thing, which I really liked was, uh, it was called horsepower. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was basically like a huge uh, metal horse mm-hmm. that was cut in half. And there was like a big, uh, jet engine from airplane. So it was like horsepower, like, you know, like yeah. it was kind of like silly, but I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I kind of enjoy the, yeah. you know, like the pun. And mm-hmm. plus it's kind of like, it looked really cool. Like it was really cool, huge sculpture, you know, from metal. Like, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So I kind of like stuff like that, you know, where it's, uh, yeah, just having something that people kind of like can like catch on that they know and mm-hmm. then kind of go from there. So, I mean, I, I, so Jason uh, is in the chat. He's uh, pretty big with uh, Nifty Gateway on the Discord and stuff. But he asked, "What fueled your interest in pop culture?" That basically answered it. But I guess a little more personal, like, do the pieces that you've made. Obviously, like Coke is not as big of a deal, but like the, you know, the Pac-Man and like the Hello Kitty, like, are those like personal interests or are those just kind of like, you know, that upper echelon of of pop culture that you decided to really start doing those? Um, It's it kind of because at first the series started as kind of like us, like the first the, the Coke piece uh was kind of like pretty. I just, you know, it was kind of almost random thing that happened. uh, And then. I was like, oh, because I wanted to just like do like some sci-fi thing, you know. I was like, oh, cylinder looks pretty cool in this composition. Uh, so I kind of like work with that. I'm like, oh yeah, maybe I could try like a little can. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, hmm, what what else could I try to kind of like mix up in this fashion? And then I kind of remember that you know when I was like a little kid, for instance, I kind of like you know because uh, the Czech Republic used to be not not like directly part of Soviet Union, but we were like under Soviet influence. We were behind the uh, iron uh, curtain mm-hmm. and so we didn't get like mcdonald's so mcdonald's mm-hmm. were still pretty like i'm not saying like super special thing mm-hmm. but it was kind of special at least like for me as a kid mm-hmm. uh growing up like in the 90s yeah. so i used to be like super pumped when we would go to mcdonald's for like my birthday and i would get like happy meal i would like get yeah. to pick the toy mm-hmm. so like oh happy meal i always love those mm-hmm. so i did like that this thing and then i kind of was like so yeah i have like a lot of characters from like my past that i used to really like mm. but i kind of like you know don't really watch any cartoons like you, i do watch like you know some adult cartoons and stuff mm-hmm. like that but i don't really watch like ducktales or yeah. whatever or like these uh, or like play old mario or mm. uh, these things so then i kind of like started uh de- developing the concept in this direction mm. it's like so what st- what things did i like that i could turn into 3d that aren't normally like presented in this way yeah and uh so that's how i kind of got into like the cartoons Mm -hmm. and uh i sort of like kept building it from there Mm -hmm. and yeah uh, that's basically how i approached most of the stuff ever since that i because before i didn't really uh necessarily focused on the concept Mm -hmm. uh so you know some pieces were more like uh had some sort of like idea or some sort of like story behind it but sm- most of them were more like uh me trying to get better technically and mm-hmm. kind of like you know up my game uh, as a 3d artist not necessarily as like artist or you know like a creative uh yeah so i, I hope that answers it at least a little bit yeah I-, I have a ton of questions from that uh one <laughs> is so do you think that you'll go back to past pieces and you know being that you have up your game you know, day by day and week by week, year by year. Do you think you'll go back and redo pieces? Uh, I'm, the thing is, I never, never really uh, considered that as a, uh, because the thing is like, ever until uh, I came across NFTs, I didn't really have any way of like monetizing the mm. work I did. I mean, yeah, I could sell prints, but the thing is that unless you're like uh, kind of a big deal in like art or gallery mm-hmm. space, it's you know it's not really gonna sell <laughs> that much i mean i had a couple of pretty successful prints on uh there's like this site is like a society six mm-hmm. so it's kind of like uh i know there's like you know like the, one of these companies where you just upload design and then then they kind of like do everything and just pay you like a little royalty yeah uh so i had a couple of successful pieces on that uh like way 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 ago like years ago uh but the thing is, like, if you get 10 bucks from print, like, 
you know, I, I saw like a lot of prints over the to- over the years. I think like four thousand, five thousand. Nice. But you know, I've been doing it for like six years yeah. or like five, five, six. Five, yeah, it's six years now, roughly. Mm-hmm. So if you divide it like by six, yeah, that's like that. <laughs> that, you know, you're, that's not really a income that can that can sustain you. Mm-hmm. So like mo- the most uh, the most I got out of the work except for like uh, uh you know on top of like learning stuff and getting better was just you know getting some like not, not i don't want to say promotion but like growing on social media basically mm-hmm. so uh going back to old pieces didn't seem like uh you know i would love to because i felt like there was a bunch of good ideas i had mm-hmm. but i didn't have the technical ability to really make them as cool as i wanted Plus, I was also doing like uh, the daily render thing, like back in 2015. Mm. So there was, you know, some of the pieces were kind of—I don't want to say rushed because I always try to kind of like do it as much as as well as I as good as I could. Mm. But you know, some of them just didn't have that much love as I would love to, as I would want them to get. You know, mm. uh, in retrospect. Uh, but it just didn't make much sense from this regard because I felt like, oh, okay, so people already saw this piece. So uh, you know, if I tweaked it a little. Uh, I don't really like reposting stuff on Instagram, yeah. so I don't think I ever really posted anything twice. Mm-hmm. So I always just post the image once and that's it. Yeah. Uh, so from this regard, I never felt, you know, I, I wanted to, but I never saw any real value in doing it other than like, you know, just, you know, like whatever. But I always felt that it would be better to like move on and just like do a new piece instead. Mm-hmm. And because that could really, you know, surprise people and be something new. Uh, mm-hmm. But ever since I like got more into like, uh, you know, NFTs and stuff, I realized that, you know, now it kind of, because I don't, you know, I don't have to do like commercial work for eight hours, nine hours, 10 hours a day. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I get to do my new work, but I also get to revisit a piece, you know, and, uh, you know, maybe animate it, mm-hmm. tweak it a little bit, create something new for it. And, uh, you know, it, it it just started making sense in this regard. Of course, it's like nice that I can actually make some sort of income from it now, yeah. which is, you know, amazing. But uh, it's also amazing from this like point of view that it kind of allows, allows me to do these things without having to worry about, you know, it's not, not necessarily profitability but like viability for my you know if it like really improves my career Mm. because uh before i didn't really think that you know like redoing image from four years ago would really get me much Mm -hmm. uh because people already seen it it's already been on like whatever reddit or instagram or twitter Mm -hmm. so yeah so yeah i'm actually very happy that i can now revisit these older ones and kind of like give new life to them and bring them up a notch Mm -hmm. yeah so relevant to that, Jason also asked about the that he saw you in the Discord. I was also seeing you in the Discord when you were talking about the uh, the Chad Knight pieces that were digitized previous pieces that they had worked on. And then do you think that that has kind of turned you off to digitizing past work into NFTs? Or because he says mm. that a lot of us, and I agree, would love to see more of your works that you have on you know Instagram and stuff like that turned into NFTs. Yeah, so... That's that's one of the things because like I seen uh because when I started like getting more into crypto art uh mm-hmm. like last year around like October uh November I've seen like a lot of sort of kind of, like this attitude that people just like get in on super air and then just like start offloading like years old work mm-hmm. uh you know just quick money mm-hmm. uh you know kind of like cash grabby kind of thing mm-hmm. which you know I don't think was necessarily true but you know, I've seen a lot of this sort of like mentality, or not mentality, but kind of like vibe in mm-hmm. the community, or at least like in the artist community. I'm I wasn't really that much in touch with like the collector side of things mm-hmm. back then, so I just saw it from the artist perspective, and I was like, oh crap! I don't want people to think that I'm just like here to collect money and you know mm-hmm. be lazy. So for my first drop uh, on NG, uh, I was kind of like, yeah, because I was discussing with uh, Tommy from Nifty Mm -hmm. that uh, he mentioned that some of uh, Nifty collectors mentioned something about like the Skull series I did. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I would love to do that. But, you know, I don't want to seem like a lazy guy who just kind of like, yeah, here's some old work. Yeah. So I did like kind of like a new variation on it with like the memes, Mm -hmm. 
which I'm not sure in retrospect was such a good idea because I think more people were expecting like the old work. Oh yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was kind of like, oh, maybe I should have just, you know, done the old work. But mm -hmm. my, my stance on it now is that I would kind of like to do kind of like 50, 50 yeah. kind of thing that, uh, you know, I did the dead memes drop that was mm -hmm. like purely for NFTs. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't ever be available as anything else. Uh, then I did the uh, OG collab, so yep. that's also custom NFT stuff. Will never be dropped anywhere again. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, I actually uh, posted one older work, uh, the Lego piece on Super Air. I'm not sure if you've seen it or mm -hmm. if you're aware of that. Uh, so yeah, so kind of like half and half. That's I guess my, my point of view, like my kind of uh, how how I plan to operate moving forward. So. For my like next uh, solo NG drop, mm -hmm. I would love to do like I have like a li this little series in mind, which I still need to kind of like. I did some previews, but I still need to figure out if it's gonna like work out as well as I plan for it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, then I might do like, I don't know, like drop some some of the like older popular work and see where that goes. But uh, as as you mentioned with like reworking older scenes. I've actually been doing that on Super Air a little bit mm -hmm. uh, that I always kind of like try to, uh, I had this like image from like uh, uh, when I was doing this kind of like uh, console thing mm -hmm. uh, with like PlayStation and I was like, oh, PlayStation, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then I kind of was, you know, thinking like, oh, when I used to, you know, come back from school, I was like, oh yes, PlayStation was like all I could think about. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's almost like a different world. And I was like, oh, PlayStation, different world, space. Oh, space station. So kind of like, figured this that I would do like a playstations as like little bases on like Mars or something. And I always liked the image, but mm. I felt that the I did like a little animation for it back then, but it was just like a time lapse of like light rotating around, like mm. sun basically, just like a 24 hour whatever time lapse. Yeah. Uh so I was like, yeah, I always felt that it was a bit uh you know it didn't really add that much to the still image. So I was like how could I improve it? So I had this idea that I would like add these like uh, memory cards like flying through yeah. that could look cool. So I did that, and uh, yeah, I think I think that yeah, I think this also kind of is what I'm definitely planning to do. Not all the time, mm -hmm. but you know, I I st still want to post like two more kind of like uh, refreshed pieces into animations that were like still prior to it, mm -hmm. and uh, then I would like to do like a. Uh, custom series for super air as well mm. uh yeah so I, i'm not sure if people really care if it's old or new i think that what's important is if it was tokenized before mm -hmm. or wasn't yeah but yeah i kind of like you know i want to do it the like right way if that makes sense because because to be honest like it's such a like mind-blowing thing to me that i can make money from my personal work yeah. after like years of literally just like nothing that like I you know I wasn't even thinking of like money when I was working on these pieces like there was mm. I was I wasn't even in like in the equation because it just wasn't on the table like no way to really do that so I was always like yeah I mean this could you know be nice series because it's like kind of clever I could maybe show clients that I can also do like this sort of like very detailed clean stuff yeah so I was thinking about the personal work more like how to show people what I can do. Yeah. Uh, also like doing stuff that I like, but how could I present maybe like the skills? So yeah. So right now it's like, <laughs> it's, I don't want to just, so it feels to me like kind of weird to just like uh, not work on anything like new. So kind of want to do like half and half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think, I think that that like 50, 50 or some kind of blend is probably like the best way because, you know, for people who have gone through your Instagram or who do like your older stuff, it is a chance to, you know, have that tokenized right and so i think that that's great uh i love a lot of your old work that i i do want to get into quick bit on the console thing i think that the n64 controller would look sick as a spaceship uh that's just me and if you happen to do it you whatever it's all your idea no worries but i just think it would look pretty <laughs> cool as like you know a three-pronged spaceship um cram in the chat also asked how do you feel about the other platforms uh he personally thinks that nifty gateway is the best how do you feel about, you know, the different drop mechanisms and, you know, the just different styles of, uh, you know, marketplaces? So I'm um, like, there. I know that there is like a lot of uh, kind of like discussion uh, among the like uh, platforms and artists about what is like the 
the platform that that should like be you know the main one or like the one that survives and stuff like that mm. but uh for me personally i kind of i like both but for like different reasons mm -hmm. i think that what i really like about super air is that it kind of feels like this very i don't know like very fine art place mm -hmm. where you just like uh it it feels more kind of also like more relaxed and like the pace is uh, less like uh i don't want to say stressful because N nifty gateway is not really stressful for me but uh not it is for me, but I guess that not for uh, other people, but I'm uh, like, I get stressed out very easily. Mm. So with like all the hype and excitement, sometimes it's for me like the week before drop, like a couple days before drop, I just like, oh, <laughs> I can't do anything. I'm just like constantly like, oh my God, is everything okay? Oh, mm. so it, this is, so it's, so it's nice on super rare that this is not like a big part of the equation there mm -hmm. that you can like, and like, you know, upload the piece, you know, finish it in time, no, no rush. Mm -hmm. uh not, not that i would say that on like nifty it's rush but there is always like this kind of uh since it's like this one day like yeah. you know uh either it's gonna go really well or it's gonna be really bad <laughs> so you have to kind of like oh my god yeah. uh so yeah so that's why i like super rare that it's kind of like uh laid back uh very very clean very like fine art mm -hmm. uh, but what i really like about nifty gateway is that like the excitement is like, you know, as much as it stresses me out, it's also just amazing, you know, to yeah. get like this, like, uh, you know, to be, you know, I I'm not very good in like spotlight. <laughs> so I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not very, uh, how to say it, not very, I'm not very good, like public speaker or anything like that. So uh, when there is like a load of mentions on Twitter about it, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, mm. people are watching. Oh, what am I going to do? Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, wow, it's like, Oh, what a time to be alive, man. Yeah. It's like crazy. So uh, that's like a very, very, very nice thing to like experience, basically. Mm. And uh, I also like the like all kinds of different drop mechanisms and stuff like that, because, mm. uh, you know, I start I just like a couple of days ago, I kind of did my toes into collecting mm. and uh, I wanted to collect some pieces on Super Air. Mm. But the thing is, like, it's I don't want. It's not like that. I would want to buy them and flip them or anything like that. But mm -hmm. it's just really, you know, I kind of, I'm very, I'm very frugal person. Mm -hmm. Even in like my, you know, real life, I always been not not always, but I, I've had like at one point I wasted a lot of money on rubbish, and then I was like, oh, I got no money now. Yeah. So ever since then, I like learned my lesson, and I'm maybe like a bit too much on the other side of of the border like being very frugal about everything mm -hmm. and uh you know on super rare it's quite uh like quite hard for me to kind of like just bid in like thousands of dollars yes and, like going like all in so i started on nifty gateway and uh it just feels like there is more you know i finally like learned how it feels from the collector's perspective a little bit mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh you know as much as people kind of like saying oh like open editions might kind of like really dilute the market you know mm -hmm. oversaturate everything i feel like you know for instance if if it wasn't for open editions or like uh cheaper larger editions yeah. i would probably not buy anything on like i would buy something eventually on super rare or like one one of one on nifty gate no probably not on nifty gateway <laughs> because those are like always crazy numbers yeah. for like the bigger drops but uh i would buy something eventually but i think that these uh, larger editions kind of make it more accessible for people who just want to kind of like dip their toes mm. and see how it feels oh it feels amazing man i was yeah. just like oh, God, that's good. <laughs> so <laughs> ever since i bought like first first pieces on secondary market I've been trying to buy every drop since pretty mm. much, or like every day, at least one drop. Yeah. I mean, it's just been like four or five days, so it's not mm. that that many, but so that's what I really uh, kind of think is nice that, uh, especially for like newcomers, uh, is that on Nifty Gateway, there is definitely more, you know, more options and yeah. just more opportunity for people to kind of, even I think that even from like the perspective of like the secondary market, I think on super rare, it's really hard to like really sell anything on secondary. Mm -hmm. uh, like obviously there are some resales, but it does like, 
it, I'm not sure if it's if I just not researching it enough or something, mm -hmm. but it seems to me that the secondary sales are quite quite scarce. You know, often it what happens is like that it's some like piece someone has been holding for like months and now mm -hmm. it's like 10x the price and yeah. someone who can afford that kind of price will just swoop in and get it. Yeah. But it doesn't seem to me that there would be like so much action on the secondary, mm -hmm. uh, which I think that is very good for like when the newcomers see this, uh, they don't feel so uh, so scared of kind of, you know, whoa, what if what happens or if I buy it and nobody wants to buy it and I will have like $5,000 tight in this digital asset, mm. you know, because they like cryptocurrencies, you can always sell them like you mm. can liquidate them almost immediately. But with the with NFT with NFTs, it may it might feel a bit, uh, you know, daunting uh, if yeah. there wasn't like that much uh, secondary market action. Mm. And especially in the last few days, a nifty gateway, it was crazy. like crazy. So I think that's very yeah, I, I've been appreciating that a lot more <laughs> mm -hmm. because pretty much everything I bought was like open editions or like packs or something so far. Yeah, I um I did a dumb thing one day like two three weeks ago, and most of the bids on like the one of ones on Nifty Gateway has gotten to you know at the time it was like thirteen fifteen whatever, and so I was like fuck it, I'm gonna throw a bid in. It was somebody bid you know four sixes right six thousand six hundred sixty six dollars, and I was like fuck it, it's gonna go higher. And I put seven thousand seven hundred seventy-seven dollars. I do not have seven thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven dollars, <laughs> but I was just like, you know, like somebody will definitely did bid higher, and like now I get to take like the screenshot. You know what I mean? Like that's worth something for me. Yeah. Um, and dude, I like I was messaging people on like Discord, and I was like, oh fuck, I fucked up. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there was like a brief, like just just two minutes, just legitimately just two minutes, where I was like, oh shit, I really fucked up, huh? Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I think I think that the accessibility on on the open pieces are is huge, right? Like I think that it allows more that, you know, middle class, middle America to actually be able to compete to get pieces. And then to your point in terms of the resale, like, you know, uh Boss Logic, his Kobe piece, which I have no plans whatsoever to sell, has blown up from a thousand dollars to now, I don't know, I think it's like eight thousand or something to that extent, which is absolutely wild. But I'm just a big Kobe fan. Like I'm just I I saw his post on Instagram, and then when it was coming, I was like, all right, I definitely want to have that. And it was between that and the uh, the Spider Man piece, and I you know did it for Kobe. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, I actually like the. I think uh, sorry, I need to like adjust the volume because I was a bit uh, wor worried that you would get like uh, you were getting echo so, from me because it seemed like whenever you talked, it like lit up that I'm okay. talking. Like, oh wow, but uh, yeah, with the actually like two days ago, I think it was well. Tuesdays, where was the super plastic drop? Mm -hmm. uh, so I was kind of like, you know, I was like checking it out, and yeah. uh, uh, one buddy like recommended like that I check it out, but you know, more in depth. And I was like, okay, okay, mm -hmm. and uh, it was like three hundred fifty for the pack. Yeah, it was like just fifty of them, and like somehow I managed to get one, and I was like, Phew. because like the secondary blew up to like what five thousand, four thousand in just eight. like minutes. Yeah. And then when I woke up next morning, there were like some listed for like the cheapest was for like six and a half thousand dollars. I was like, mm -hmm. whoa, yeah. that like that really makes like cryptocurrencies look like some index fund yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, dude. But, you know, I wasn't really getting it, expecting like some huge profit or anything. I just wanted to kind of like try it. And I felt like, OK, 350 is not that uh, like. It's not that much that I would, I, you know, if I lost it, I wouldn't really mind it too much. Yeah. Uh, so because like, for instance, when I had like my uh, solo drop on Nifty and then I would draw it into Ether, I was like, man, I never had that much money invested in anything. Yeah. And I just saw the charts going up and I was like, <laughs> so then I had to like liquidate like half of it because I just couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me, I have to kind of like start lower and just 350 seemed like, yeah, that's, I'm, I'm definitely okay losing that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and obviously I haven't lost anything so far. So like, oh man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think that thanks to these like cheaper uh, additions, I will definitely kind of like build up more confidence and like, it's not that I wouldn't believe in it. I do believe in it. It's just like, for me, it's just seems like so much money that yeah. uh, it's like, you know, quite, quite uh, just scary. The idea of like bidding so much on one piece or something. Yeah. So I, I think I will build up the confidence and kind of like uh, feel more uh, at ease about it and not feel so nervous about like, oh my God, it's $5,000. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. 
Uh, Jason keeps coming in with some great questions. He asked, follow your success recently, and we kind of talked about like the cloud aspect. Do you feel a lot more pressure in terms of your drops, in terms of putting out oh. really high quality? <laughs> Oh, dude, I mean, like, <laughs> I've, been, I've been thinking about, because I was originally planning to drop uh, something else for this drop, mm -hmm. but uh, then after, like, seeing the discussion about, like, oh, it's just old work, because I wanted to kind of, like, uh, animate some of my, like, uh, other popular series, mm -hmm. uh, but then I was like, okay, so I don't want to seem like I'm just, like, you know, taking the piss, you know, doing, like, uh -huh. reusing old stuff, so, like, okay, I better think of something new. That would be like a nice, you know, whole like series that would work well in a drop format. Mm. And uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've been feeling the pressure a lot, especially after I saw like the secondary market action in past few days. It's like some of the resales have been absolutely ridiculous, like mm. mind blowing. Yeah. And I was like, OK, so I, 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 if I fuck up, it's going to be really bad because like what if all these guys who purchased it for like 10x now mm it's going to drop because my drop sucked. And I was like, oh my God. So it's, it's, it is a very stressful, but I'm, I'm hoping that, because like why I'm a bit stressed about it is that my work generally, I don't like doing one thing, like the same thing over and over again for like long period of time, because mm -hmm. I just kind of lose interest and want to do something else. Mm -hmm. And so if you like scroll through my Instagram, it's kind of like, you know, yeah, one series is like that, different series, and it, mm. they kind of look, they, I try to make them similar in, mm, not, not maybe like visually per se, but kind of more on the, that it's kind of flipping something on its head that you know, like yeah. it can be like, you know, I did this like uh, environmental series where there was like a big ship stuck in like uh, six uh, O-ring, uh, how do you yeah. call it, six pack ring. Uh, and stuff like that. I actually so have it, it pulled up. I wanted to talk about <laughs> it. I have that pulled yeah, up. So, <laughs> so, I, so, uh, th so what I'm worried about with like the drops is that I tend to kind of like deviate from like the, because everyone wants the like rusty uh, pop post apocalyptic cartoons. Mm -hmm. And I'm very well aware of that. Yeah. But I kind of want to, don't want to be just the guy who does like rusty cartoons. Mm -hmm. I want to kind of uh, do different series as well i mean i'm you know i i always like to revisit a series and add like five you know, like three six nine new images or whatever yeah. and then just you know uh continue on with something else but i'm worried that people won't for instance like the direction i picked or like the idea i picked or uh, something like that and uh that could have I'm, I'm not sure how much of an effect could that really have if like because it seems to me that uh, like at some point, uh, there is always someone who will find it uh, like cool or yeah. worth the like investment or like mm -hmm. you know getting it. Yeah. So I'm kind of hoping that like you know if I did like some drop that wouldn't be as popular as the previous one, mm -hmm. that people wouldn't just like oh I'm not getting that and like <laughs> and, like that would be like addition with zero sold. I would be like oh my god my career is <laughs> over. So I I'm hoping that that wouldn't happen. But you know it's certainly something that stresses me out at night. Mm -hmm. I so so to your earlier point, I think that people who are buying pieces at like much higher multipliers from what they were originally going for, like the, you know the discussion as far as like the Nifty Gateway Discord, I think is the the correct way. If you're buying things for the investment. You have to understand that you could lose your investment and you should really be buying it for what you think it's worth. And if you're spending, you know, $10,000, $20,000, $80,000 and, and, you know, to the moon otherwise, then you have to be sure that you really like the piece. To your other point, I mean, at this point, your success is undeniable, right? Like, I, it seems like you're you're very self-accountable and very uh, a harsh critic to yourself, which is great, right? Because you're going to put out better work from that range. But at the same time, like, I think, you know, what got you to the dance is your capability. And then, you know, to kind of doubt it, like you're clearly highly capable. So to just, you know, take some random person's thoughts on the internet, you're never going to please everybody. And you're clearly talented. Oh, yeah, enough. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just like, uh, you know, this, I think that this is like, as you mentioned, it's really like this sort of like self, this like, like kind of like the usual, like artistic self-doubt that like, oh, am I good enough? The imposter syndrome. 
Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of it can be really tough sometimes because like sometimes I just wake up and I'm like, oh, everything I do sucks. Like, look at this series sucks. Yeah. This series sucks. Everything's mm-hmm. better than my series. Why I'm even bothering trying <laughs> to do that? But at the same time, it sometimes kind of like pushes you like, okay, okay, so maybe this sucked, so I can do better now mm-hmm. and kind of like get go go from there. But I'm trying to kind of tone it down a little bit because mm-hmm. I've been doing it like quite a lot for a really long time. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and it's, it can be quite exhausting trying to like always kind of like have this sort of like, uh, uh, how to say like this discussion going on in your head, like, Oh, is it, is it worth anything? Is it good? Like, Mm -hmm. or should I be better? Or like, you know, and this sort of thing. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's both, uh, I know it's blessing and a curse. Yeah. Do you, do you do anything to try and like help keep your mind right in terms of, you know, say meditating or, you know, anything to that extent? Um, I'm uh, not really because uh, it's kind of funny because I, I, I have this, I, uh, maybe I should actually try something like meditation, mm. uh, because my mind is like going thousand miles an hour yeah. all the time about everything. And whenever something like happens, it can be like tiny thing or huge thing or whatever. I just keep like thinking over it and it's, it can be, this is like, you know, uh, good, for instance, when I'm thinking of ideas or like try, kind of trying to like flesh out a concept I have in my mind mm-hmm. that I can mm-hmm. like, you know, I can literally get stuck on it for entire day. Yeah. Like my girlfriend is telling me something and I'm like, oh yeah, that could be cool if I did that. And she's like, <laughs> are you even listening to me? Like, oh yeah, of course. What did I say? <laughs> I don't know. Something about cats. Yeah. You know, so, so it's, mm-hmm. uh, it can be really good for this, but uh, sometimes it can be a bit like overwhelming. So mm-hmm. I think that, but b- because when I tried meditation, you know, I, I, I hate stuff like when I'm not doing anything. Yeah. So when I'm like, uh, on the beach and I'm just trying to like get some sunshine, you know, some nice tan, mm-hmm. I just, it's just impossible for me. I yeah. just lay there for five minutes. Like, dude, this is so boring. Yes. I, yes. I could be doing so much other, so many other things. So with meditation, I had similar experience that mm-hmm. I would just like, sit and try to kind of like breathe in breathe out kind of you know get into sort of like very calm state mm-hmm. but i just my mind was like no nope nope yeah. nope <laughs> and it kept going on and on my brain is is actually like really similar and and i've struggled to use like a lot of like the apps and stuff uh i know that a lot of the apps have improved uh goltra who's like a big collector he was actually talking that he uses the calm app and i know sam harris has an app if you just wanted you know like a little one two in terms of where to start for me like I noticed that I am a lot better in like in terms of a mental space, like after like a, a good workout. And so for me, like a almost meditative practice was like doing hot yoga because you just suffer for, you know, an hour, hour and a half. And I come out of that and like I have a whole new brain. Like it, it's not, you know, just rapid firing because I'm a little bit exhausted, but I'm also just calmer in general. So I, I personally found pretty good success there. I don't know if that would help. I'm I'm a very just go 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 kind of person so when you were saying that i'm like oh i have the same fucking shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah i actually that now that you mentioned the uh, hot yoga i mm-hmm. actually kind of have similar thing i i i always not not always that's that's a lie i sometimes i try to work out or mm-hmm. like do some sporty stuff mm-hmm. uh and I, like every couple of months i go to a gym mm-hmm. and i don't really enjoy lifting weights too much mm-hmm. but what i do enjoy is like cardio yeah but my problem with cardio outside of the gym is that with my, I have the same kind of mindset with running. I just sprint for like 500 meters and then I'm like, Oh my God, I can't run anymore. Mm-hmm. And then I have like, <gasps> at like snail space for the rest of the run. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on, uh, when I'm on treadmill, I can just like set a speed and it won't let me go faster. So yeah. I kind of like have to keep the pace mm-hmm. and, uh, that that works quite nice actually but i have the same problem that the but my problem then is that like you know i haven't run for like months then i go to gym mm-hmm. hit the treadmill and spend like 40 minutes running at pretty high pace and then i cannot walk for two days <laughs> so I'm like, oh. <laughs> but but when i stop running when i get off the treadmill it's like really cool feeling because mm-hmm. you know it's like all the endorphins and but also like the kind of like the exhaustion yeah. that, you know, all I can think about is like, oh, my, my legs are burning yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there is no like none of this noise from like work or mm. business or anything like that. So, yeah, so that's that's definitely 
something I, I have, you know, we have in common, I guess, about yeah. the like just tiring yourself out to kind of think of nothing. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the that's like a stairmaster behind me, and so like through COVID and stuff, that that's been my like main go to, and that thing like fully cranked up is is absolutely exhausting. I have to like, yeah, it, whatever. We'll, we'll kind of we'll, we'll pivot away from me and and exercise because you know people are here for the art and stuff to that extent and so i so i went through your more personal instagram and so actually i i wanted to this is a brief question hood ass is just a hot take on your name i'm 90 percent sure right it's a stupid yeah, but yeah. yeah okay so i went through your more personal instagram account and i saw like a lot of travel pictures and so it seemed like the the pictures that you took in, and i'm gonna butcher this pripyat uh yeah pripyat, yeah so when you took those pictures, the claw picture specifically heavily reminded me of all the other artwork. Is is there a lot of inspiration that you get through travel that you're bringing into your artwork? Um, there is, but not in this case particularly because um, I kind of uh, I did like like the I started this series uh, like the rusty one I think in april 2017 mm. and uh, i went to pripyat in uh, uh july 2017 so i already done several images okay. i think yeah. I, I done the whole the, the the whole drop that i did the last one on nifty gateway mm. like i did the whole drop uh before i went to uh to chernobyl so mm -hmm. that was i don't know three months four months yeah uh but when i was in chernobyl i was like wow this is pretty cool it yeah. kind of looks like the stuff i do so i took like hundreds of uh, hundreds of pictures mm -hmm. uh unfortunately because uh, i was kind of on a not not like tight budget but the tours like private tours in chernobyl like the uh like the area over mm -hmm. there not just Pripyat, but the whole uh, like there is like a bunch of other places mm -hmm. uh it's just two days and you're there with like 16 people or you know 10 to 16 something like that so it's not a huge group but it's fair amount of people so you cannot really just stay stick around and like explore that much mm. uh and like take pictures and you know take uh, reference uh pictures of like uh, equipment or uh assets i could like use and scan them mm -hmm. uh but i wanted to go back and kind of like get like a proper private tour and just like stay there for like four or five days mm -hmm. and just like take a lot of like reference pictures and uh scan stuff with my camera mm. because the problem is that uh since like there is nobody really upkeeping the buildings uh in Pripyat or like in the whole chernobyl area except for the power plant which was still working you know they they still use electricity from there mm. uh, i think they stopped it just like a couple of years ago or like limited it severely and will stop it in like a couple of years from now mm -hmm. Uh, but the Pripyat is like falling apart that there are a lot of buildings that actually like collapsed yeah. and uh, they won't let people visit for that much longer because, well, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I kind of <laughs> hope I will manage to uh, get there before everything, you know, is banned or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so that so I, yeah, I would definitely uh, I would love to take more inspiration from uh, these trips. Do you have any like trips or or bucket list checks that you want to be hitting? Yeah, so I've seen this like really cool place in uh, Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. uh, there was like this uh, lake, or I'm not, not sure if it was if it was it wasn't like Dead Sea or something. Mm -hmm. uh, but they had like loads of ships, uh, and basically when the water evaporated, they just became like wrecks. Yeah. And there is like whole beaches of like shipwrecks. So mm -hmm. I was like uh thinking i would like get a drone and get my camera and mm. just like scan all these like uh, shipwrecks and do like a popeye picture you know with like rusty popeye yeah on like shore with like uh, ocean in the back mm -hmm. and like bunch of these shipwrecks you know kind of like around the place but you know it's it's it just uh you know with these trips it's quite hard to find like people who would be willing to go on trips like this because you know what, what you're going to do in like Kazakhstan especially if it's not like in the capital city or anywhere like it's you know probably a couple hundred miles away from there anyway yeah. so you would be stuck in like some you know a village <laughs> you know that yeah so it's quite hard to find people to do this mm -hmm. then i would also i'm not sure if it's still still like uh, possible to even go there 
But like a couple of years ago, there were these pictures of like a Soviet uh, space program. They did like a ripoff version of the shuttle. Mm -hmm. uh, they call it like uh, Buran, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was like this guy who like uh, snuck into this like huge facility and took pictures of the like unfinished uh, shuttle copy. Uh, and it was like, you know, everything was falling apart, you know, like yeah. crazy. But it, looked, it just looked so good. Uh, so I would like to kind of, uh, but I, I think they might have either like uh, locked the zone away as like mm -hmm. some sort of military space or something, or just like uh, completely destroyed it and like uh, got rid of everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this, these are like the places I would like to visit in terms of like inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, you know, I, I found out that even just going to, you know, I, I was in uh, Porto in uh, Portugal mm -hmm. last year in around around October, I think. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I found that it's pretty cool to just like, you know, it's very old city with like these very painterly, colorful, uh, like uh, small, not, not small, but like two story buildings mm -hmm. that create like these like beautiful little roads. And, you know, it's very kind of medievally built city that it has like these uh uh how you call it like curvy roads and mm -hmm. it doesn't have like the grid system or anything no nowhere nothing near close to it so i just like scanned a few facades of these old buildings and then you know it, it still kind of works nice with like the stuff i do mm -hmm. so uh i'm definitely planning to do a lot more of that uh in my like future pieces that i would just like kind of scan some uh, old buildings here yeah. in europe somewhere or something and use those so yeah, I mean the photography was actually very good, uh, very fruitful hobby I started doing because it helped me to kind of like get the eye for composition. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot more about how like lenses work because in three D you're basically like simulating cameras mm -hmm. in, in like virtual space. So basically, like model the entire scene and then you put like virtual camera you look through mm -hmm. and then you like render it out. Uh, so you know getting more comfortable with like uh, photos and camera gear and stuff like that helped a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the shots that you've taken look professionally done. So they, you know, <laughs> I, yeah, they're really kind of, I'm just kind of hiding everything behind post-production. <laughs> um, okay. So you, you work with uh, Dota for those rings. Did they give you all the rings so that way you could kind of like Thanos it or kind of look like, you know, Tom Brady or, or what? <laughs> uh, no, it was because, uh, I it was uh, at first I wasn't really sure because you know it was a lot of like new stuff for me when uh, I got in touch with like uh guys from uh nifty and like you know this whole like oh what is drop oh what is nfts oh mm. <laughs> and then like creating N nfts like uh with like uh this uh gaming um uh, team mm. uh I was like wow it's like you know like very you know, some, from for someone who like do who usually did bunch of like advertising stuff, you know, or like some whatever personal work, it was like a lot of very very different kind of like situation mm -hmm. to get uh kind of like uh to figure out what to do, mm -hmm. and uh they, they then we ended up like deciding that the rings would be cool because uh that was something that uh the team was very like proud of because I think they were like the first team ever to. Uh, win like the international championship in Dota, mm -hmm. uh, like two years like back to back. Mm -hmm. uh, so they and they got the rings as like their trophy. So that was like a big uh, kind of like they had, like a lot of symbolism for them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and then basically there was this, uh, but they didn't have the like three D model or anything for it. So I had to kind of like uh, model it from the pictures and kind of like uh, figure out. Uh, how could they look uh, in 3D? Because I never had like the physical item. Uh, I've never seen like seen it 360 or hold it in my hand. So there was a bit of uh, guessing going on. Uh, and then uh, it was like also what was kind of uh, hard, not not hard to like uh, get, but it was a bit difficult for me to kind of think in context of like a pack. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, I always do series, but I always try to kind of like uh, for each image to be kind of like a different to have like the same idea but like to be different mm. uh but this was like that it was actually better if they were like similar in like terms of the like hero asset or like the main thing that's going on mm. and they were just like differentiated on the 
So I kind of wanted to visually make them, uh, to visually represent the rarity of the rings, mm -hmm. basically. That like the white one would be like the most plain one with just like very, uh, no, no, I don't want to say like basic, but like very uh, simple uh, animation of the particles going through it. Mm. And then I kind of thought that it would be cool to kind of like build on top of that and always kind of like add a little bit more kind of like fanciness <laughs> to them or something. So yeah, so it, it was it was it was definitely like different to. Uh, what I like usually kind of I, I would usually approach a project like this or like because I never done project like this mm -hmm. but like the projects I done before that uh, but yeah I mean I, I I was actually you know very I was actually mind blown when it kind of like uh, went public and I saw all the interest and like all the hype around I was like wow I wasn't expecting that at all you know because mm -hmm. <laughs> I you know it, I think it was like a first gaming uh, collaboration in like NFT space, as far as I know, mm -hmm. so I, I wasn't sure like if it really would make like that much of a, I don't want to say dent, but you know what I mean, kind of like that much of an impact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the scene, but yeah, it it really went way beyond uh, what I thought was possible, really. Yeah, yeah. I, it seems like collabs are definitely going to magnify greater than the uh, two parts, right? Like you plus Dota is much bigger than you or Dota so separate, you know. So do you do you plan to bring other works that you've done into the fold in terms of like NFTs like that, you know, the, the airplane and, and stuff to that extent with like the, the recycling and, you know, more global awareness? Like, do you think that you'll bring that or like the hype wear, hype beast type clothing, like from like old school? Do you think you're going to bring that in? Well, it's it's uh, it's <laughs> it's a bit difficult because as I'm as I mentioned before, uh, with the like my, my worries about be doing like two drastically different things, mm. I kind of want to uh, hold back on like, because for instance, I really, really like the medieval series with like the yeah. uh, Nike armor and stuff like that. I, gotta pull uh, that I think it's actually like, uh, like from the technical standpoint, I think it's like the best work I've ever really done because uh, I really kind of like wanted to, I don't know, like just go ham on like the details and like model like all these little, uh dents and like dust on everything and stuff like that yeah but i don't think that it really fits all that great uh in terms of my other work so uh i don't i'm not planning to like really doing and like uh, doing anything nft related with this specific series mm. but for instance with like the with the plastics series with like the straw and the mm. uh, six pack rings and yeah. the what was there and the cup yeah. Uh I would love to do something with those. Uh but I would like to kind of make it a little bit more than just a normal drop because I think that the subject matter in these in this series uh, would deserve there to be some sort of like a uh, good cause tied to it. Yeah. But on on the other hand, I don't want to make it look like I'm just trying to kind of like get some clout out of doing like charity or something. So yeah. I'm just trying to figure out uh like the right approach how would i mm. do that because i have like some i have a couple of like ideas how could i make these pieces uh more interesting like through animations and stuff like that and i think it would look really cool because i originally wanted to do animations with these as well mm. but uh <laughs> i soon realized that i probably bit more than i can chew mm. and i didn't want to spend like three weeks just doing like uh, ocean simulation with waves and stuff yeah. for it to be animated so i just did stills in the end mm. But uh, I think that could be really cool. It just, you know, I, I want to find uh, a good way of, of doing that sort of thing. Uh, and with the other series, like, I'm definite, I definitely do want to kind of, like, uh, work with the skulls. Yeah. Uh, I have I have few few cool ideas for a drop with those. Any but leaks? But I, I would like to kind of, like... <laughs> Any leaks? Sorry? Any leaks for the people? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't want... I don't want... Because I, I just started kind of like uh, mm -hmm. figuring out what I could do with them just like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, it turned out to be like really, really, really challenging. And there is nothing I can do to kind of like uh, speed it up uh, mm -hmm. on my end. So I'm trying to kind of figure out how to do it uh, well, you know, maybe like later, 
uh, probably maybe not even this year because this might be like a really pretty big undertaking what I have in store with that. Mm -hmm. So I need to figure this these things out. But yeah, overall, I am uh, like uh, when I was uh, discussing this in Discord, I didn't mean it like I would never want to kind of like work with my older scenes again. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not that. It's just that I want to be kind of like keep this in mind. So uh, it does because I just. I, I really don't want it uh, to like come off that I just like, yeah, I showed up, you know, I have like a lot of followers. So I would just like yeah. dump work on Probably it, money. make money and then like disappear uh, or like start doing like some quick renders for everyone. Like, yeah, yeah here's like, you know, some simple things to kind of mm. like get as much as possible and then kind of like uh, <laughs> disappear or something. Mm. Uh, so I, I kind of want to, kinda, you know, do, do find out some um, balance how to kind of approach these things. Yeah. I mean, those, those two, I pulled it up while you were discussing them. Those are my two favorite pieces of work that you have done in terms of in terms of projects because I really like the tongue in cheek, especially with like the environmental pieces. And I'm like a big like streetwear person, so seeing you know what medieval Nikes would look like, and I think it would be cool to see you know like the Air Mags as a medieval you know like yeah. every everything else. Um, but yeah, I, I just they they just were awesome. So oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna close out with the the metaphysical question, and it's uh the deep and metaphysical question, which is, uh, what do you think your purpose is in life? Oh, <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of funny because like just three months ago, I would tell you like, oh yeah, get some like uh you know uh, work in advertising, you know uh, hustle and grind, mm -hmm. get some clients, and you know like maybe like set up like a studio or something down the down the line. Mm -hmm. Uh. But, or you know maybe just like it, it's it, um it's everything changes so quickly and not just in like the nft space but also uh in like even in advertising like mm. i just a couple of years ago i was working in an office doing like uh calendar designs from like shutterstock i would just get like uh image from shutterstock put like a mm. font on it with like mountains 2018 something yeah. like that and that would be my like full-time job yeah so, and then i was like uh, i wouldn't even you know consider ever being able to work with like adidas mm -hmm. on advertising campaign or something yeah. like that and then so i kind of stopped really trying to plan anything or like find any you know i just kind of go with the flow and see where it goes yeah uh so yeah so you know currently i'm very very deep into like uh nfts and uh but I, I don't want to kind of like stop with, I don't want to say just NFTs, but I would like to kind of uh, use the success I had in NFTs to sort of kind of branch more into like art in general mm -hmm. to kind of try to maybe, you know, I'm to be honest, I'm, I've am i never really researched it or anything like that. So I'm just kind of, you know, I maybe it's just like pipe dream to ever get anything of mine hanging up in gallery or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I would try to, I would like to kind of do stuff like that, you know, just do personal projects, do something that I enjoy doing, mm -hmm. uh, experiment with different techniques, different like styles, concepts, uh, even different media. Uh, I was thinking that, you know, it might be cool to maybe try to like build something, uh, in like real life mm -hmm. uh and then kind of like scan it and maybe use that in 3d mm -hmm. uh and then have like uh because you know then then i could have, have like some sort of like physical thing mm -hmm. but i could also use it in like digital media yeah. and kind of figure out maybe like some kind of cool uh, connection there mm -hmm. uh yeah i mean it's just I'm, I'm i'm also very bad at planning so <laughs> <laughs> i don't really think about these things too much mm -hmm. i'm just like very much kind of not just in the moment, but like maybe a couple of weeks ahead, mm -hmm. you know, if there is something coming up. Yeah. But other than that, I'm generally kind of keeping myself busy doing things so I don't have much time to think about like, eh, what am I going to do in five years? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's awesome. I guess. OK, so absolute last question. Promise. I appreciate the time. But if you were in my shoes, what question would you ask yourself? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of the things because I, I never really uh, like do much of uh, like planning when I when it comes it comes to these like uh, interviews or like mm -hmm. you know uh, podcast or something. So I never you know I always like get start uh, talking to the, it's like the, to the host to you mm -hmm. and I'm like oh, maybe I should have like thought of what could be 
possibly talk about. Mm. So, uh, uh, I don't know, question for me. Hmm. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I honestly don't know. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite hard because it just feels like, uh, you know, there is... Because like there is like I you I'm you know I usually before I used to talk more about like the technical side of things and mm. like to be and not really about uh like myself or like yeah. the like like art I I don't really like using the word art because it feels like so like oh I'm an artist mm -hmm. but you know I never really used to like discuss these things too much mm -hmm. it was most like how I do my work what tools I use stuff like that so. My kind of like a uh, question for myself or like pre premeditated questions or answers I could uh, I could do is very short in this area. Mm -hmm. All good. I guess if you do you have any any upcoming works that you can talk about? Um. Uh, to be honest, I actually kind of like enjoy uh, the surprise element of okay. the whole thing. But yeah, I, I think that. Uh. I don't. I, have, I, I, I don't. I, I don't. don't I don't want to spoil. It. I. I, okay. I know myself. I'm chatter. Yeah. I, mean, I would just blabber yeah, on yeah. and on. Okay. I would re reveal something. So I just want to kind of like mm. keep it on the down low and not say anything because I know myself and I would mm. just spoil the secret. All right. Favorite piece that you have made? Huh. I think. Uh, I think in terms of like uh, from technical standpoint, I think it's the. Like, I'm not sure if I have like a specific piece, but my favorite series from like technical point of view is the uh, medieval one. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I really because like I think it might be I might be a bit biased because it just took so long to finish mm -hmm. that I, by the end of it I was like oh yeah I was feeling like a champ for yeah. actually being able to like finish it and do it like in reasonable time. It was like I think three or four months, so I was like yeah that's pretty good. You know yeah. I was expecting like half a year, <laughs> and. Uh, from like uh kind of like feeling thing like what, what i re like uh, personally mm. i really like the spongebob uh rusty one mm. uh because the i don't know it just it was kind of like a culmination of like the the whole series and i felt like i made uh, there was like i felt like this piece was there was a lot of progress compared to the previous ones in terms of like the detailing uh, the environment, because I usually, before I try to kind of like, uh, get away from doing like more man-made things because you have to model them and kind of mm. like texture them more precisely because with trees and grass, you can kind of hide stuff. You just, yeah, put grass on it, you know, and <laughs> you can hide a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, and I also liked it as a, like how it turned out in general. Mm -hmm. uh, it like, because when I did like a first preview, I was like, oh, it looks kind of janky. I'm not sure I, if I even want to like finish it. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then when I kind of like pushed through this phase, it turned out like, oh, that's looking pretty cool. Yeah. So it's still like one of these images that I actually like uh, always kind of like keep in mind and like kind of cherishing. Awesome. Oh, it also, I think that now that I'm thinking about it, I also think that it might be like the like most popular image in mm -hmm. this in like I ever did. I'm not sure if there is any. Yeah, I, th I think so. I, I, I haven't checked like the stats in, in mm -hmm. a while, but I think that it's definitely up there. So that's a nice cherry on top of the <laughs> favorite cake. Yeah. Well, I mean, it sounds like you're you're very, you know, like what you said, you're very in the moment, not really trying to plan ahead. But, you know, you're you're humble, you're likable. I appreciate the time, man. It was uh, it was awesome. <laughs> Oh, oh, thanks so much for inviting me. I had like really good time. I, I was, to be honest, uh, when I when you mentioned the lifestyle, I was like, oh my god, this is going. <laughs> I'm gonna say something really stupid, and everybody's gonna know. Uh, but yeah, it was it was super. It was a lot of fun. Uh, mm. Thanks for having me on, and uh, uh, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, yeah. It was great, and thanks for all the questions. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, all right, we'll we'll try and run it back maybe in like six months to a year. Hopefully, you know, I'm sure that you'll have continued success and, you know, we'll, we'll have more to talk about. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks so much for the time, man. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much for the invite. Bye. See you. What's going on, guys? Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully, you guys had fun. Hopefully, it was insightful, right? Uh, that's, you know, part of the reason why I'm here. And, you know, I, I was blown away at how casual he was about everything. You know, it, it's it's he's still such a normal dude extremely likable 
had a blast talking to him. Definitely going to try and run it back with him in terms of, you know, maybe the next six to 12 months. And I'm sure we're going to have a ton more success. So, you know, we saw Beeple's pop. We saw Pax pop. I'm not going to be surprised if his work continues to pop. So scoop it up before it blows up. And, yeah, stay safe, guys. Have fun. Thanks for tuning in. Always appreciate it. Thank you. Peace.